Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to make an adjustable DC to DC boost converter which takes in 12 volts and can give an output which is continually adjustable from 12 to 60 volts. The power of the circuit is about 100 watts. The 12 volts can be from a lead acid battery or some lithium ion batteries connected in series. The heart of the project is the TO494 PWM IC. It comes in 16 pins and in the pinout is as shown. Pin 12 is the VCC or the positive supply and this is pulled up to 12 volts. Pin 7 is ground pulled up to 0 volts. The AC has two built-in air amplifiers. The inputs are pin 1 and 2 and pin 15 and 16 for the first and second air amplifier respectively. I'll be using the first air amplifier for output voltage feedback and regulation and the second air amplifier for overcurrent protection. The way the air amplifiers work is that whenever the voltage applied at the non-inverting input is more than that applied at the inverting input, the output duty cycle from the output transistors is reduced for compensation and vice versa. So you'll need to set up the inverting inputs pin 2 and pin 15 to a constant voltage of about 2.5 volts and this is obtained by the potential dependent network made up of R2 and R14 for pin 2 and R9 and R10 for pin 15 as shown. Pin 14 generates 5 volts and if you divide this by 2 you get 2.5 volts. The resistors are 15 kilo ohms for both of the potential dividender networks. Capacitor C3 stabilizes the 5 volts reference generated by pin 14 when the IC is powered. Connect pin 3 to pin 2 through a small capacitor of 47 nanofarads are shown to stabilize the IC. The daytime control pin 4 can be used to set the duty cycle. I'll be using this for soft start purposes. Soft start ensures that when the circuit is powered, the switching MOSFET is not exposed to a large surge current. The output PWM will increase gradually from 0% up to a set value, and so the MOSFET adjusts gradually. For soft start, you need a circuit made up of the resistor 15, capacitor C9, and the resistor R16 connected as shown. When the circuit is powered, the capacitor C9 is discharged and it will act as a short circuit. This will create a current path flow from the 5 volts and to the daytime control pin 4 of the IC and this ensures that the output duty cycle is zero. With time, the capacitor C9 will change and the voltage applied at pin 4 will gradually reduce. This ensures that the output PWM will also increase gradually. The resistor R16 ensures that finally the voltage applied at the daytime control pin 4 is 0 volts so that the daytime pin does not determine the output duty cycle once the circuit has begun operating properly. To set the oscillator frequency, you need to connect pin 5 and pin 6 to ground through the capacitor C1 and resistor R1 as shown. C1 is 10 nanofarads and the resistor R1 is 3.9 kilo ohms. With these values, the switching frequency will be set to about 25 kHz. The switching frequency formula is as shown. The AC can be set to operate either as a push-pull driver or a single ident or parallel driver. Push-pull is common for inverter circuits, but because we are dealing with a circuit with one switch, we can connect the output transistors in parallel mode because this will also double the drive current. And to do this, you need to pull down the output control pin 13 to ground as shown. Pin 8 and 11 are the open correctors of the output drive transistors while pin 9 and 10 are the emitters of the output drive transistors. You need to pull up pin 8 and 11 to VCC through a current limiting resistor R3 of 70 ohms and written for twist 1 watt. The drive signal will be obtained from the open emitters pin 9 and 10 of the IC as shown. And this will be fed to the gate of the switching MOSFET Q2 through the gate resistor R5 and the diode D1. D1 is a fast switching diode. You can use the FR107. For R5, it is between 27 and 47 ohms and written for at least 1 watt. The way the circuit works is fairly simple. Once the IC has begun switching, you will obtain output pulses at pin 9 and 10 and to the gate of the MOSFET as shown. Let's say on the first case you have a high pass through D1 and R5 to the MOSFET Q2 as shown. This will cause the MOSFET to conduct and this creates a current path flow from the positive of the battery through the series inductor R1 
through the MOSFET Q2, through the current sense resistor H and to the negative rail or ground. Once this happens, energy will begin building up in the inductor L1 in the form of a magnetic field. The polarities across the inductor L1 is as shown. After some time, the outputs at P9 and 10 go low. This will cause the transistor Q1 to turn on because it's P and P. This will quickly discharge the gate of the MOSFET Q2 and cause it to turn off very fast. Once this happens, the magnetic field of L1 begins collapsing and this will cause the voltage polarity across it to reverse such that you have it in series with that of the applied VCC. And this will cause the diode D2 to be forward biased and allow current to pass through and change the output capacitor C5 and power any load connected. Then the process repeats over and over again. The output capacitor C5 is written for at least 100 volts and 560 microfarads. The capacitor C6 is for filtering any high frequency noise present. It's 100 nanofarads and 100 volts as well. To regulate the output voltage, a feedback is made up of the resistors R7, the potentiometer V1, and the resistor R6 as shown. R7 is 21 kilo ohms, R1 is 100 kilo ohms, and R6 is 4.7 kilo ohms. The output voltage will be determined by the position of the middle terminal of the potentiometer. By adjusting the potentiometer, you can vary the output voltage from 12 to 60 volts maximum. Once the voltage across the output capacitor C5 is such that the feedback voltage to the pin 1 of the IC is just slightly above 2.5 volts, it will cause the faster amplifier output to go high and this will cause the output duty cycle being sent to the gate of the MOSFET Q2 to lower and this will cause the output voltage to stop increasing further. When the MOSFET is on, current will be flowing through the sense resistor R8 and this will cause a voltage drop to be developed across R8. I wanted the current limit to be 14 amperes and so in case more than 14 amperes flows through, the voltage drop across R8 will be sufficient to trigger the operational amplifier, the RM358, to give a high output and feed about 5 volts to the non-inverting input P16 of the IC and cause the secondary amplifier output to go high and also cause the output PWM to decrease. The operation amplifier is said to have a gain of about 18. This is the formula for calculating the inductor R1. It's at least to 20 microhenries for an input voltage of about 12 volts. Ensure that the diode can handle a surge current of at least 10 amperes. The MPR 10-100 is written for 10 amperes and a reverse voltage breakdown of 100 volts making it suitable for this project. The output capacitor value is determined by the formula as shown. The Zena diodes D3 and D4 ensure that the feedback voltages to the air amplifiers does not exceed 4.7 volts. With that being said, that marks the end of my video and I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. If so, make sure to give it a thumbs up, check out some of my other videos, have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.